uh, I would like to float some ideas. Um, and in fact, the, the theme of my talk is floating. And I'm very glad, Joe, that you're uh, with me still, um, because I'd like to ask you to help with the first of two live demonstrations. OK. Um, the first one, I think, is, is fairly uh, reliable. The second it's one, praxic. second one isn't. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, can I ask you? Yes. Um, do you understand the concept of relative specific gravity? No. Good. Because I hope in about two seconds you will stay there. Okay. I have here two metal cylinders. They're exactly the same size. This one's made of magnesium. This one, as you can see, is a beautiful gold color. Okay. And if I put them in your hands and let go, yes, oh, oh. tell me what you feel. This is, this is jolly heavy, much heavier than this. Right. And essentially, you've experienced the fact that two objects of the same size can have different densities, different specific gravities. Okay. So thank you very much indeed. Um, That's it? Yeah, it is, just for now. Thank you. Um, I'm going to put these here, and I invite you to pass them around. Uh, the kilogram of gold I would like back at the end. I did something very bad then. What did I do? The picture came. Um, when I was a small boy, I had a direct experience, or I suppose an indirect experience, of watching the astronauts floating on the moon. And it was an experience that moved me very deeply. And it, it, made, it gave me a passion for science, a passion for technology. And it really shaped my future trajectory, my career. Of course, I wanted to be an astronaut. But um, instead, I, uh, I got to be a television producer. I joined the BBC, I went to the science department, and I made um, a number of films about space. Uh, not quite as good as being an astronaut, but definitely pretty good, a second best. And I also uh, was involved in the BBC's early interactive projects. And um, once, I did actually get to frolic in space, or nearly in space, like my heroes, the astronauts. In a moment, you're about to see my bald patch. There it is. <laughs> uh, so I managed to wangle a ride on the Vomit Comet. And if you ever do that, I can highly recommend it. But take the scopolamine and take the amphetamine, and you'll have a fantastic time. You know, drugs in space. What, what could be a better combination? The mission actually was a total failure, because I was trying to film that experiment with the two cylinders. And um, I, they were confiscated by NASA. So um, I had to use a battery instead, and it wasn't the same at all. But this um, philosophy, I suppose, of having experience as a direct part of learning is something that I've tried very hard to put into the interactive apps that I've been working on with my colleagues at Touch Press. And what we try and do is put into our titles a direct experience of engaging with the knowledge, with the subject, with the information, and manipulating it. And, and really, the, the key point I want to advance is that that direct experience is a fantastic way of learning. Now, in that work, I've collaborated very closely with Theodore Gray, um, who uh, wrote uh, the, the Elements, uh, one of the apps that we've explored. And together, we've built quite a number of these periodic table displays, about 50 around the world. Uh, that's Teo holding our prototype noble gas display where we got sick and tired of people asking if the gases are real, so we put 10,000 volts through them and they each glow appropriately. And we build these displays for schools and for universities and for annoyingly rich people with huge studies that want a periodic table. And in them, we put an interactive display. Um, here it's a touch screen. And it plays a video like this, showing the unusual properties of the element ytterbium. And what Teo's done is he's frozen that ytterbium compound, and he's now taking a gold-coated magnet. And when he puts it over the top, because the material is superconducting, the lines of magnetic force are perfectly repelled, and it's a levitating superconductor. I think it comes very close to fulfilling the requirements for Arthur C. Clarke's third law, which is that any sufficiently advanced science is indistinguishable from magic. Now, I'm going to attempt to give you a live demonstration yourself, because although I love videos, and sometimes it's not possible to uh, do things live, um, I think um, a live demonstration is always best. So 
I'm going to end with a live demonstration on the floating theme, and I hope very much it works. This um, tank is being filled with an extraordinary gas, and this gas has two amazing properties, which I'm going to demonstrate to you, I hope, now. Um, I'll turn it off so that um, we don't waste any, and I'll very carefully remove the lid, and those of you are, who are close enough can hopefully see that this is a apparently completely empty tank. And if I take this uh, aluminium boat and move it to this gas tank, you will see that one of the properties of this gas is that it is extraordinarily dense. And with luck, it will float. A completely empty jug. It's marvelous, I feel like a stage magician. And I'm now going to take this imaginary gas and I'm going to... <laughs> it is bizarre, this material, to actually feel it and handle it. Um, so I'm trying to... Yeah, it's nearly there. Oh well, I hope you get the point. I guess I should just tip it down to where it floods and sinks, or nearly sinks. Now, I said there were two properties of this gas, and now comes the slightly dangerous part. So you'll forgive me if I get a chair ready there, and I'm now gonna make my pledge. And, um, See if I can remember my pledge before I do it. <laughs> Take care <laughs> and put experience into your learning. Thank you. <laughs>